Right, here at um, Aylesford School of Ceramics, I'm going to show you the types of clay that we use in our studio. Um, mostly it's four different types of clay we use, although we do get some of the clays in for special things. Um, but I'm going to tell you about the four that we mainly use. This is the one that we use the most of, which is a stoneware clay. It comes from Valentine's in Stoke-on-Trent. It's got 20% grog in it. And what grog is, is, is a fired clay dust which is added to the clay which reduces the shrinkage of it so that it fires without cracking so much and reduces the shrinkage to about 13%. And that fires up to about between 1220 and 1280 degrees. Um, if you roll it into your fingers you can feel a slight sandy feel to it. The grog in that is quite fine. Okay, so that's what we mainly use in the, in the workshop because this is what um, the mo most glazes go on this, on this clay. The next clay is a earthenware clay. Um, people think of it as terracotta. It's got a high iron content, but it fires much lower. It fires to 1120 degrees. Um, this would have been used for garden pottery, things like that flooring, tiles, things like that, but it also can be used with slipware. You would, if you look into old English slipware, terracotta clays were used and you would add white slip onto the top and decorate. Generally because it goes to a slightly lower temperature you get brighter colours through an earthenware clay. You can also get a white earthenware clay, which is what it says completely white. The next clay I'm going to show you is a grogged, heavily grogged earthenware clay. When I was telling you about grog earlier, it comes in different grades, so it can be from really, really fine sand all the way to really gritty. And this, if you look at this, it's got a lot of heavy grog in it, very, very gritty. And this would be used more in a sculptural piece of work. Also, the beauty of this is because it's got so much grog in it, you can get away with your work being a little bit thicker because it's when it's in the kiln, half of that clay has already been fired because the grog content is so high. So that we've made bricks in this, which were about that thick, which survived the firing, which in, in, in any of the last two clays I showed you, they just would not survive. Okay, so that's that type of clay. You can also get a heavily grogged stoneware clay but you wouldn't want to use that on the wheel because it does rip your hands to shreds a little bit. So you, if you did want to use a gritty clay on the wheel we would mix half and half to lessen the grog content. The next clay is a porcelain clay. Now I've got filthy hands now but it's not great but this is porcelain clay. It's got hardly any grog in it at all. If Sometimes nothing and it shrinks 20%. So it's a very, very difficult clay to use because it hasn't got any grog in it. When you throw in it, it feels like putty and it doesn't have any strength to it. Also, when it's firing, it goes very floppy in the kiln. So any little imperfections you've got, if you've made a bowl and it's slightly thinner on one section, it will show that up when it's fired and it will sag on that point. Um, another important thing about porcelain is that when you're using it, you see I've got dirty finger marks in there. That's not great because that will show up. You've got a beautiful white th thrown piece of work and these little specks will really show up in your, in your work. So all the tools that you use have to be spotlessly clean, the wheels spotlessly clean um, to keep that pure white clay. That's it, Bill. That's how to run.